What have you noticed over the last 13 years that maybe there's a maybe there's a struggling PNC office out there? Maybe there's a new PNC agent out there that's like, dude, what do I need to do to be Dan Kitajima in 13 years? What would you say? It just started, you know, first year, 100 policies up a month, you know, and then now, uh, just a couple months ago, we hit our highest, which is 600 policies. Boom! In one month, yeah. As much as I'm proud of what we've done, I feel like I, I don't want, even want to hear it that I'm doing a great job. Like, I, I don't, please don't say that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> because yeah. I, I feel like, uh, I, I feel like, although I'm proud, I feel like well, I'm definitely not satisfied. Mm. Successful people are doing big stuff, man. They, 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 they're never satisfied. They know they can always do more. And, and they're committed to the game. You know, it's a process, you know, for, for you. You're just, you're enjoying the journey. You're enjoying the ride. Um, man, that's awesome. I'm excited to interview Mr. Dan Kitajima, owner of a farmer's insurance agency in Orange County, California. Dude, you're doing some mega big stuff. Have you always been that way or have you just gotten better over time? Hey, thanks so much for having me, Cody. It's a real honor to be here, you know, because talking about big stuff, I mean, um, I'm humbled to just be talking to you. And we talked about it earlier that I should be the one asking you the questions, but, <laughs> but we'll get that uh, on our uh, my YouTube channel, hopefully. Um, you did agree on. <laughs> yeah, but no, totally. uh, um, yeah, it, it's been really um, something that just gradually over time, you know, took place. It, it wasn't anything that just one year after another just had a huge jump. It's just been very steadily, but you know, I think the, the business that we're in does take some time and with some patience, but if you're consistent and you're putting in the right activity each and every day, you know, over 13 years, you know, something starts to happen. So Boom. I was, yeah, I would say over um, the last several years, we've hit some things that has started really working for us, but it has been a, a steady increase when it comes to production. That's awesome. Dude, thir 13 years, they, they always say long obedience in the same direction, you know, and, and you're or a, a literally a spitting image of that. You know, I mean, you're, you're successful, super successful. W one of the larger um, PNC agencies that I know in the country um, doing some big stuff, right? It took 13 years. You got an amazing staff. Um, I love, I've loved watching some of the videos, the behind the scenes and some of the sales meetings and stuff. I, I enjoy the, that kind of stuff. Um, what have you noticed over the last 13 years that maybe there's a, maybe there's a struggling PNC office out there. Maybe there's a new PNC agent out there that's like, dude, what do I need to do to be Dan Kitajima in 13 years? What would you say? Wow. Um, I, uh, I think first thing first is will be the marketing, you know? How are you marketing? Because when I first started doing insurance, you know, we want to market to not only to today's world, but also we want to market thinking about what's going to work in five years too. Yes. So I think the marketing strategies, if it's a little outdated, what has worked before um, was great, but you know, what's going to work now and what's going to work in five years. want to always think a little bit ahead, of, a step ahead. Yeah. So some of the things I was doing earlier on, I was, I was thinking, Hey, I, I, trying to see some trends of what's going to work and yeah. try to see, when you see the trends, you can see some trends that may not work. Like for example, um, I'm not sure if people like being called these days, you know, <laughs> um, you know, but you. Pe people, people do like to be on their phones and be entertained. You know, yep. so um, I would say, hey, like, how are we marketing? I think that's the number one thing I would be thinking about as agency yeah. owners. I almost feel like that's our job is like we're almost like a marketing company now. Not, For sure. You know, and how to just be marketing and be present and be transparent. And I think those are some of the things that I feel um, is going to convert these days. Yeah. Um, so I, I would say, yeah, I would start off with marketing probably. I love it, man. Dude, in today's world, you're, you are cutting edge, right? You're branding, you're marketing, you've got a staff, you realize it takes a team, you're probably spending, you know, t obviously tens of thousands of dollars a month, you know, if, if not a hundred grand a month, and, and you get the, you get the, you know, you get the modern day business world um, without giving away all your secrets, because they got to, they got to, they got to go to your website and actually pay for some time with you is, is, is and they should, by the way, if they're in, if they're in your space. Um, wh what's some type of marketing technique that isn't, crazy revolutionary but it's something that's working well for you that you're okay sharing Yo, yeah well facebook you know and instagram really i would just that's really that the answer really uh but, and i don't i feel like making videos 
you know, being transparent, getting them to know you, you know, I think that's a big yeah. part of the business. You know, you have to be known. And I think, I think just, just by doing a little bit of research on you uh, and I'm going to do a lot more on you. I mean, I don't think there's anyone else that is doing it at, at your level, you know, so that's why, you know, I'm just so honored to be talking to you with you is uh, I feel like we're on the same page when it comes to just, Hey, let's just put ourselves out there. You know, we have nothing to hide. We're just insurance agents. We're not, you know, we're just here to help people. <laughs> There's nothing to be, you know, we're professional and friendly and just, you know, uh, nothing to hide and just put our, putting ourselves out there. It did, as an introvert, was a little bit harder for me to get across that, you know, point of being comfortable enough. But um, I think this, it's necessary these days is to just yeah. uh, film ourselves, take picture, make content and just really put ourselves out there so people could know us and then do business with us. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Rich Cabinets in Dallas had, had me had me reach out to you and start following you. And I uh, instantly, right, went to Instagram, like you're talking about Facebook, Instagram, marketing. I, I instantly went to Instagram, followed you. Um, you're always put, you're always showing some fresh kicks. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a shoe fan, you know. Oh, yeah? Um, I'm, I'm an ex-basketball, ex college basketball guy. So I'm, 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 oh, always, yeah? I'm always, always watching your stories. I'm like, that's awesome. I love that. Uh, congrats to your Lakers. I'm assuming you're, you know, maybe a Lakers fan out there in, in Orange County, but. No, I'm actually a Clipper fan. Uh, okay, which is kind of right. weird. I, I root I for the like underdog. That. But uh, you're out in Dallas, right, Cody? Actually, uh, in Springfield, Missouri, I'm in Dallas so much. Oh, really? Okay. The, in the conference, well, that's, everything that's else. That's your conference was, yeah. Yes, everybody literally thinks I I, I'm, I live there. And I told my wife the other day, if we if I go to Dallas one more time, I want to just <laughs> buy a second home in Dallas. I've been there. <laughs> I've been there like three or four times in the last month and a half. It's crazy. Uh, so as far as as far as the last 13 years, what kind of growth have you had? What kind of, how many policies have you sold? What kind of numbers are you doing now? I'd love for those to really, I'd love for your numbers to speak for themselves from a credibility standpoint. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, yeah, well, uh, as a farmer's insurance agent, there's a lot of different ways to get started in, in this great opportunity that farmer's agents have. But uh, I started off in a system where we just started off day one, your agency owner, and you just write a book a bit, write a policy that's yours. So there's nothing like really given to you or you're not buying any policies for anything. So mm -hmm. just organically growing uh, every month. Um, but um, yeah, again, it's just nothing where, you know, one day we just bought a big, a big, big, a big, big, a business. It just started, you know, first year, 100 policies a month, you know, and then now, uh, just a couple months ago, we hit our highest, which is 600 policies. Boom! In one month, yeah. They call it units, so I'm not sure, you know, different ways to calculate it, but if it's like a three-car household and it counts as three units. Wow. Uh, so 600 units, 601. Uh, so we have 10,000 policies in force. And, um, yeah, close to 10,000, 9,900. So I don't want to, you know, <laughs> exaggerate. Uh, honest man, cl close yeah. enough. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, but honestly, Cody, I feel like I'm just getting started. You know, I, I feel like sometimes, you know, we got the personalized agent of the year award from farmers insurance, which is a huge accomplishment for our agency. I'm so proud of my team, but wow. people will say, Hey, we're, we're doing great things. And I guess the numbers are, are great, but I just feel like the potential Dude. is just, is just, we're just really just getting, beginning to, just start to seeing it, seeing the potential, like what I feel like we should be doing, because I mean, I'm not sure with your experience, but I'm sure independent agents, you know, there's some monster agencies out there. I just feel like yeah. I never want to be thinking that I'm doing a great job because mm. frankly, like there's just so much potential in this business that it's almost like disrespectful to the business or to the company for not taking advantage of it, you That's know? Good. So as much as I'm proud of what we've done, I feel like I, I don't want, even want to, hear it that I'm doing a great job. Like, I, I don't, please don't say that yeah, <laughs> because yeah, yeah. I, I feel like, uh, I, f I feel like, although I'm proud, I feel like I'm definitely not satisfied. Mm. Successful people that are doing big stuff, man. They, 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 they're never satisfied. They know they can always do more and, and they're committed to the game. You know, it's a process, you know, for, for you, you're just, you're enjoying the journey. You're enjoying the ride. Um, man, that's awesome. Uh, if, Absolutely. If you, yeah. If you had to describe yourself for those that don't know you in a single word, it's tough. What would you say? Oh, man. Um, just only give me one word, huh? <laughs> one word. One yeah. Word. Um, it depends on the day, but I think right now it, it may be consistent. Mm. You know, I just feel like, like you just touched on it, Cody. It's like, 
I just love the journey so much that I don't feel like, hey, once I get to a destination, I'm going to take a break. I'm not always like looking forward to a break, even though they are necessary. And I do take maybe a vacation a year, but yeah. um, I just enjoy working so much that I don't feel it is work. So it's easy for me to stay consistent. And I think that is from what I see other agency owners, I think that could be one of the difference makers mm. uh, because I, I'm always thinking of the next thing. I'm always working. I'm always trying to motivate my staff. I'm just always doing something. And I feel like this may be a blessing that I've had, you know, that I just want like to be busy <laughs> and yeah. that helps me stay consistent. That's awesome. Dude, that, what a great word to choose when 92% of insurance agents are failing in their first three years and, and you're coming out and, and you're picking your word consistent. That's what a lot of agents struggle with, man. They're not consistent on a daily basis. I always say step number one is to show up, right? And you show up every single day. I, I notice that about you. I see it about you. I respect that about you. Um, and, and, and I love it, man. I love that. Uh, if, you, if you had to look back over the last 13 years and you had to think of one aha moment that really maybe shifted things for you, right? Got your attention, made you change something, and, and and it really started to propel you on the path to success. If you had to look back, it was probably several, I'm sure, right? Because for me, I've had, a, I've had a, a, a revelation many times in our business about how, how to change something up. If you had to pick one thing that could benefit somebody that's watching that was really more of an aha moment for you, what would it be? Wow. Man, these questions are great, Cody. Ah, thanks. Uh, you gotta step on my game when I interview you. <laughs> uh, I might just ask the same questions, honestly, because these, there we are, go. These, are, these are great ones, and I I, I love how, the passion you have for trying to you know bring value to your audience. Thank you. Uh, these, these moments are so important in in our careers, and there's so much to talk about. But with, with the time that we have to to focus on what has really pivoted our agency, man, I, I just have so many. That I could think of right now, um, mm. man. I think I think one of them was you know when I was new. I think you know part part of being ambitious. The problem could be that you get overly ambitious and you start getting a little frustrated mm. that things aren't happening as well. Especially in the PNC world, it just takes some time to build it up, you know. And I I could sense that with my ambition was as high as it was, I was getting frustrated at myself. I wasn't as nice to my employees. I wasn't as nice to maybe even my clients almost. So one of the aha moments was like, hey, I have time, you know? Mm -hmm. and so so having a sense of gratitude, more sense of gratitude and patience really. When Once I had that patience kick in, I was like, hey, I'm doing a good job. Give myself a little bit of credit. Don't beat myself up. Everything's going to happen. Just a matter of time. That's when I became a lot better as a leader, especially to my employees even pa being patient with them too. So for me, it was patience. Another, another aha moment I just thought about right now is when like, when I found a lead source that really worked and I was spending money on it, hmm. for some reason, I just thought like I shouldn't spend more than the X amount of dollars on it. Like I just didn't think like, but it was a, a aha moment was like, well, why not? Like I want to scale my business. I need more leads. Just blow up the marketing budget. You know, go. so that was an aha moment where I don't know why, like it was like a imaginary cap I had on myself where like, oh, I shouldn't spend this much any more than this on marketing. I was like, that was a hot moment was like, well, let's just blow this place up and just spend more money because once you have more leads, a lot of the problems are solved. Yes. Yes. Now you're speaking my language, man. I love that, dude. Uh, that's strong. Th those are great, great feedback for the audience. Uh, I have time you know, um, overly ambitious. I struggle with that too. You mentioned you're with, with a team and staff and stuff along the way. I being overly ambitious as well. And being a lot alike, we seem to be on a similar, how, 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 how old are you? I just turned 40 this year. 40. Okay. Good. Well, dude, you don't, you don't even look 40. I just turned 30 this year. So we're uh similar age, you know, um, in a way. And, and, and we feel like, I feel like we have a, we've had similar paths because I've been in this industry about a decade and I've been overly ambitious hard on my staff, didn't treat people the way I should along the way. And I feel like you start to grow and mature and you start to become more of a business owner because in this business, I feel like, I don't want to see if you agree. I really feel like you're initially you're a great salesperson, right? Then you want to be a great sales manager. Then you want to morph into being a great CEO and business owner. And I feel like, you know, I was a great salesperson. I made 120 grand when I was 20, you know, um, great nice. sales manager learned over time how to be one 
and now trying to be a CEO and business owner. And you seem like you seem like you've moved in to more of that role as well. Yeah. Yeah. The roles will always change, you know, but um, I, I call it, uh, you know, being patiently in a rush. Like <laughs> I'm always in a rush, like doing something. But in the, the in the big picture, I'm being patient. But in the, in the small picture, I'm just in a rush. Like I got to get stuff done. I got to get stuff done. But I'm still looking at it, you know, sit, taking a step back and looking at it in, in a, uh, uh, from a, a macro view. But yes, yeah, you've been only 30, man. The sky's the limit. I mean, you're just getting started. Thank you, dude. I mean, that's, uh, that's, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm really looking forward to just, you know, just connecting with you and just keep yeah. in touch and seeing what great things you're going to accomplish because man, to be where you are at 30, I Thank mean, you. at 30, I just, you know, I was three years in and I was just mad every single day that I wasn't, you know, having a million dollar book of business. I was, <laughs> you yeah. know, it was just, the, the mindset was so different. Um, but I think, I hope that, that, that could help some people where, Hey, if you're working every working hard every day, even though there's gonna, it's gonna be not easy and it shouldn't be, it does um, pay off. For sure, absolutely, it always does, man. You know, I mean, those that those that survive and make it and really they end up thriving. You know, they really do. Uh, you said being patiently in a rush made me think of the country song. Um, I'm in a hurry to get things done. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's lyrics always kind of on my. I don't even listen to music, but lyrics <laughs> kind of on mine, which is kind of funny. Uh, if you had to do it all over again. Not that you would, because you know what? You've learned so much along the way, right? But if you had to do it all over again, you had to start over from scratch. Someone to drop you off in the state of Maine. I don't know. You had to build a new team and a new office and everything else. Nobody knew who you were. What's the first thing you would do? I would just, you know, have a marketing plan. You know, I would make content. I would promote it. And I would... Just, um, I will do that first and then, you know, look for staff yes. to, um, help grow our, uh, uh, agency. But I, I think I will say, I say marketing before staff or lo even location maybe is yeah, because yeah. you just, you just need, you just need someone to talk to, you know, and that's, that's, that's the first thing, um, the first step for anything. And I, I say, looking back at things, I will say, um, some of the mistakes I made sometimes being consistent also means that you're not willing to change as much. Yeah. So I think although people have said that, Hey, you've adapted to the new world. I look back and sometimes wish I would have adapted a little bit sooner or spend more money on marketing sooner. So those are some of the things like from what I've learned, I wish I would have, you know, went from internet leads to social media a little bit faster or, you know, um, just spend more money on marketing when I knew it was working some of those things are things I look back on. And um, if I was starting all over, those are the things I would do, do a little bit sooner or be a little bit more aggressive. With. Yes, yes. A hundred percent. Me too. Me too. Me too. Uh, as far as staff, what, what, what's, what's, something you, what's something you look for when you're hiring staff? There's a lot of people that have agencies. They struggle to find good people. You've clearly found – I mean, how many staff members do you have? I have 12. Yeah, exactly. I was thinking, yeah, I was thinking you had 12. Um, they seem really impressive. What do you look for? And how do you find great staff? Um, yeah, I just look for good attitude and good activity. I think them having confidence is important too. Yes. Um, and then having someone who has a long-term view too. As agency owners, we always play the long game, but sometimes staffs, that's a little bit harder to expect that from them. But some people do have a, more of a long-term outlook in their careers. Yes. So I, I feel like that's important. And also I try to look for people I like to just generally want to help, you know, and I'd like working with because a lot of times, you know, I'm not sure how other agents do it. But for me, it's I haven't had that great of luck of finding people who are licensed, ready to go. My strategy has always been, hey, you know, you don't know how to know anything about insurance. You just have to be a good person, hardworking person. Again, attitude and activity. As long as you have that, I feel like, hey, I'm going to be patient with you. We're going to I'm going to teach you from day one what everything is. And just build with that person long term because even though they may not be licensed, they'll start off with. So in the beginning, I feel like I'm really helping them. You know, I'm paying them and I'm training them. And I feel like my training is pretty valuable. So, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. so I feel like if you don't genuinely like that person, you're not really going to go through the journey of paying them and training them at the same time. So I do feel like someone that you 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 like as a person you want to help is a good fit. Um, and I look for those type of 
uh, attributes rather than skill or pedigree or resume because um, I'm really in it for the long run. And I feel like if you help somebody from day one, there's a little bit of sense of loyalty that you may, you may be lucky enough to get if you really help them with everything they know about insurance really came from that person. For, for sure. Uh, let's talk about activity for a second. We, we, got a, we got a couple more minutes real quick. I got two more questions. Um, as far as activity, uh, what's some of the activity metrics or some of the, some of the activity things that, that, that work well in your office that, that someone can learn from? You know, Cody, I don't really look at, um, although, you know, I'm Asian, so people think I'm a real numbers guy. Yeah. You know, I'm kind of more of a, just, just a feel guy, you know, I'm in the, I'm in the middle of the cubicle. So this is my private office, but I'm in, I have a desk, you know, I have a cubicle out there with, in the middle of everybody. That's awesome. So, so you know, and newer agents are sitting next to me. So I'm just literally this way, that way I could train this person. I could train this person and questions all over the place. So. Um, I just gauge activity level by how busy we are. Um, and sometimes another thing that I'd like to do is like, Hey, if we're not busy, then it's sometimes I'd like to take accountability and figure out what am I not doing right? Mm. Am I not getting enough leads? Am I not giving them duties? You know? So, um, I just, I just know what busy is and I like being busy. So I like to be out there and just help people stay busy because being busy, I feel is a blessing. Yeah. Yeah, my dad always says you can work um, half a day. You got 24 hours. You choose which 12 hour period you work. <laughs> I love that. And your dad was in insurance, huh? Yeah, he's been in it for yep. 30 years this past April. And uh, wow, he's more on the, the the life and Medicare side. But yeah, he's he's been doing it forever, man. It's he's he's and, and actually that that leads me to my my last question, which is it's kind of funny you said that. I credit a lot of my success to my parents, you know, and raising me the right way, making me show up when I don't want to show up, right? Teaching me how to have good manners, teaching me how to be on time to something and not be late, you know? Um, who do you credit for your success? Same thing. You know, my parents. Um, well, my dad was an entrepreneur and I, I actually, you know, helped him out with his business too, um, the digital marketing side. But um, yeah, same thing, Cody. I mean, it's just like you, you, what you just said about, you know, how your parents helped you is, yeah. is the exact same thing, how I feel about my parents. Um, but uh, we're, we're really blessed. And I feel like sometimes when I come across staff members or people that may not have had that luck, then I feel like it's maybe my obligation to like trying to provide that, you know, uh, learning lessons. And hopefully I could, you know, influence them in a positive way, the way my parents have influenced me. Exactly. I love it. Uh, for those that are like, dude, Dan Kitajima is a beast and I love him. How can they find you? Uh, yeah, just my name, Dan Kitajima. Um, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, Facebook's big with uh, insurance agents, but um, I, I personally like Instagram. And then a YouTube channel uh, where yeah. I have, you know, interviews with uh, top top uh, elite agents, I call it. So um, you'll be the next, well, not, maybe not the next guest, but a future guest. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, where, you know, I just, I just love talking to other agents that are doing great things and really learn from each other. So um, those are some of the places. And yeah, always DM me or Facebook messaging me is um, something that I, I like to engage with because, man, there's just so much to learn. And um, uh, that's what um, I'm a big believer in that. I have a lot more to learn and we have a lot more to get done. Boom, dude, you did an unbelievable job. Thank you so much for being on today. No, thank you, Cody. T too bad you had to go, but uh, we're going to keep in touch, man. I, I really want to uh, do some more things with you and then uh, yeah, get to know each other too. Dude, for sure. Hey, for those watching, again, you're like, man, this has been good. I want you to be in the hot seat and be the next Dan Kitajima doing big things. Thanks for watching. Have a great shoot. Hey, if you enjoyed this, I got another one you're going to love. It's right there. Click on it. See you in there. Hey, so I want to transition now um, into working leads. I want to give you some specific training on how to work leads, and then I'm going to finish with some mindset pieces. Okay, I'm going to finish with some mindset pieces in a second. Okay, so so so.